Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I just thank God. I just reverence his house and his spirit tonight. You know, something about when God, I believe the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. And it's something about when he dwells in a house. I mean, he dwells in us, but when he dwells in a corporate house, there's something special about a corporate anointing, a corporate praise. And when God shows up, his presence lingers. Mm. And your heart just wants more and more and more and more of him. And I just love what Bishop was talking, because that's, that's my prayer to God always. I'm like, Lord, you know, I'm not perfect. But God, if my heart is right, you can do something with that. If my heart is right before, and that riches and gold I've never ever wanted, but I've always just wanted to have a heart for the Lord because he's so good. And I just thank him, I thank him, I mean, just I thank him. God has brought me a mighty long way and I know he's taken me another place and I just look forward to it. A little hesitant and a little afraid to be honest, but I thank God for what he's doing in my life. Again, you're not looking at a perfect man before, you look at a man that's humbled. You know, so many people want to run up here and, and preach and all that, but it's a humble thing to be here. I'm telling you, I just don't know it. Because I'm like, Lord, I just want to be right before you and your people, amen? So I'm gonna go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, for your word. Because your word, it is truth, Father. There's nothing missing out of your word, Father. Lord. It is everything that we need. Yes. Father, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that you've given us, Father, oh God. Father, that comforter, Father, Lord. Father, times when we're lonely, we're hurting, Father, Lord. You've given us that gentle spirit inside of us, oh God, Lord. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do tonight, Father, Lord. Father, Lord, I decrease that you may increase the more and the more, Father Lord. Father Lord, help me to give the word that you put in my belly, O oh Father Lord. To speak the word, Father Lord, with clarity and understanding, Father Lord. Father, bless the ears that hear the word tonight, Father Lord. Let them get something out of this word, Father Lord. Let something soak in their spirit. Let it fall upon the good ground tonight, O oh God Lord. And Father, we thank you. We forever give you the glory and the honor because there is no one that deserves praise but you father lord so i thank you lord in jesus name we pray amen. amen first i want to give honor to bishop tonight head of this house to all the uh pastors ministers deacons elders even down to the children amen so i have a word tonight i'm going to be with you long it's just something that's been kind of troubling my spirit something i've been asking why What's going on here? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with the church in terms of this word? Um, I have a few notes. I, for some reason, something tells me I'm not even going to use the notes, but if the notes are there just to be important. Amen? All right. So um, our scripture tonight is going to come from Proverbs 18:24. And I want to take my time because sometimes I can rush, I get excited because nerves build in and I just want to be able to get this message across. So I just pray that God gives me just a little bit of slow grace today, amen? amen. All right, 18, 24. Again, that's Proverbs 18, 24. And it says, a man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than any brother, amen? amen? So my thought tonight, and it's just, it's really more of a discussion. I, I would love to kind of maybe later on down the road somebody pick this up and add to it. Paul says one plant, one water, but God gives the increase, amen? So my thought tonight is loneliness in the house of God. And it's kind of a double standard, like how can you be full of God's love, but be lonely. So that's a question that I had to ask myself over and over and over again. 
It's a question that I had to say, how was it that I'm sitting in the house of God week after week after week, but I'm lonely for fellowship? Now, I love the Lord. I love him with everything, and I understand that the love of God that he's put in my heart, okay? I am full of the love of God. I used to be a man who used to search for love. I would search the streets and, and the bars and the clubs. I would go out drinking because I was looking for love. So I don't need that love anymore because God has completely filled the love in my heart, okay? But sometimes in the house of God, we're still lonely. Yes. Relationship-wise, I just don't understand why we don't have more relationships in the house of God. How is it that Sunday after Sunday we come to church, we hug, we say, I love you, but then we leave the house of God and there's no kind of conversation with any kind of brothers and sisters. Nobody picks up the phone and calls. Nobody says, hey, I'm thinking about your brother through the week. How is that possible? How is it? But I love you, brother. How is it that the relationships that were sometimes, and I can only speak for myself because I had to go through this, and I had to be real with myself with this. When there's events in the church and there's functions that we don't come out, we don't gather together as one. Now, when we was in the club, out in the world, oh, we had friends galore. We party Monday through Saturday. I party seven days a week. But we get in the house of God and the friendships shut down. They go away. And that's the thing that always bothered me. And I had to be real with myself. I said, Brother Todd, yeah, man, what's going on? I said, why is it that you don't engage? What is it about the brotherhood and the sisterhood in this house that I don't engage? And I had to be real with myself. And one of the things that I discovered about me was insecurities. We have so many insecurities about ourselves in the house of God. Whether they be, I'm overweight or I'm not pretty enough or I don't think that I have the right amount of education to be around people or I'm just ashamed of things in my past. Those are things that I had to deal with and be honest with myself. What's holding me back for just communicating with the brothers? And I realized that, you know what, sometimes that it's not that I want to present myself perfect, but I don't want anybody to see my scars. I don't want anybody to see my pain, or I don't want anybody to think that I'm not what they think or their perception of me is. And so many times we all do that. We sit, we build ourselves as idols, if we're going to be real about it. So everybody say, oh, on fire for God. Oh, oh, they're doing this because I see them. But you don't know behind the scenes, sometimes we're bleeding. Sometimes we're actually sitting in the house of God and we're bleeding out. And how is that possible? When we got this kind of word and anointing, so many people I see come in and out, come in and out. And I wonder what happened to them, where they are now. Was there anybody there? Is there a heart in the house tonight? Was there anybody there who understood a need that was, and thank God for the spirit of discernment and the spirit of prayer. Because sometimes when we're sitting in God or in the house of God and we're going through things because we're too proud, we don't want to tell anybody about it. Because either one, either we've been hurt or wounded in the house of God. Now, if we're going to be real, let's talk real tonight. So many times that we've had relationships in the past in churches, and people have gone and said things and did things against us. So then it turns us off against people. I don't know how many times I've been wounded in the house of God, even by a pastor. So then we, our hearts get a little cold. Next thing we know, we say, you know what? I don't trust. So we learn not to trust one another in the house of God. We walk away from each other. I don't know how many times when I was younger, a younger Christian, I was coming to church and I remember not knowing what I was going through, but I remember just crying out in my spirit, Lord, let there be a word, something tonight. Let somebody come and just identify with me. See, I don't know about y'all, but see, I'm tired. I don't have time to play no more. 
because I got a long way to go and a short time to get there. I can't play no more. I need to know if my brother's bleeding, I'm bleeding with him. Brother, I got some scars too. I'm not perfect in this walk. I ain't got time for somebody to sit here and think that they're perfect all the time. No, nobody's perfect but God. Nobody. We got to get real with you. I mean, we got to become transparent. Now, don't get me wrong. You have to use some discretion and discernment who you talk to. Because everybody's not. Come on now. Should I say it? Saved. Saved all the way. The book of Isaiah says, like, Ephraim, you're like a cake. Unturned. It means you're not done all the way. Sometimes you got to be careful who you speak or pour into. But you can't tell me that you're not in the house of God and there's nobody you connected with. Nobody, not one person. Week after week after week after week. You come in and you come out and there's not one person you talk to. There's not one relationship that you build that you can trust. It's a mutual thing we got to do. Sometimes people do talk and gossip too much, and sometimes don't tell your business to that person. But find somebody that's spirit-filled, somebody who can pray with you, somebody who's real with you. You know, I don't know so many times, you know, we come in here, we, we, we're all saved by grace, thank God. But you know, but the thing that God brought us from is the thing that we're going to battle with the rest of our lives. So sometimes we come into the house of God, and sometimes we just need somebody to pray with, talk to. Brother, I'm struggling today with this. I wanted to take a drink last week because I was going through something, but I didn't by the grace and mercy of God and the Holy Spirit that dwells in me. But it's a shame that we can't open up and tell people that without them judging us. Who are we? Shame on us. Tell This is supposed to be the house of God to where we should have the most support from our brotherhood because the world gives it to us if we go out there, am I lying? We got all kinds of friends. We can walk out this door right now and go back to some of the same drunks we ran with, to some of the same people we, we did drugs with, same people we partnered and committed adultery with, fornicated with. But this is the house of God. This is where we chose it. We made a conscious decision to live for Christ, to stand for Christ. But we can't get along in the house of God because we're too busy talking about each other. Shame on us. Shame on us. As Christians, we just ought to be kind-hearted to one another. Romans 12 and 10, it says, Be kindly, affectionate one to another, with brotherly love, honoring and preferring one another. How was it that... (laughs) How was it that? I, true story. A couple of months ago, and they said we got to be careful what we say to each other. We, we have to be careful what we speak. The Bible talks about exhorting and loving and building one another. That's what we should speak to each other. I danced a few months ago, and somebody came to me afterwards, and they said, Well, brother, don't take this personally. Now, you know when somebody come and talk about don't take this personally, you already know where they're coming, the spirit from which they're coming from. And they said to me, well, you know, I enjoyed the dance, but you were moving your lips to the words of the song and it was distracting to me. Now, I was raised, I was taught to dance this way, that way, and the other way. So, I sat there for a second, I just thought, If you only knew what it took me to get up and to do that, how I beat myself up, and how much work that it took to get there, you dare to open your mouth and criticize how I worship and give my worship to God? Oh, you foolish Galatian, who has bewitched you that you think that you can speak something negative against somebody and their gift? And that's the problem that we do. There's nothing wrong with constrictive criticism. Because we all need it. Thank God for Bishop. Good word. But try this the next time. That'll change the whole nature of it. That's constructive criticism. But to sit and tell somebody what your perception of what their worship is and what you think they should do, but that's the problem. See, that's the problem in the church. We want to talk to And I just thought to myself, now, girl, if you caught me a couple of years ago, I probably would have cussed you out. 
but I thank God for grace and mercy that I'm beyond that. But that's real talk. Or what if I was a baby Christian? You would have destroyed a baby Christian saying something like that. Because your opinion, we all have opinions. But sometimes we need to keep it to ourselves and let God show us how to communicate. So they say, ma'am. So I want to talk about also relationships. One thing I love about relation, real relationships, I look at husband and wives. And, and, and this is my thing that I always ask God to. I look at husband and wife, so I'm like, you know what? When you've been married for so long, your spouse should know you. Now, I'm going to get a little blunt with this one. If you have a pimple on your backside, you go to bed naked with your spouse and you wake up naked. That's how your spouse should know you. Because there's an exchange of realness, transparency between husband and wife. What Christ has the same transparency. I tell God all the time, Lord, you know what? I try to hide things from you, but... Where can I go? I can't hide anything from you. The Bible says if I make my, my bed in hell, you are there. There's nothing that I can hide. So my transparency to God is, Lord, you know me. You know what's in, so you already know what's there. So why should I like, I'm just going to confess it to you and Lord, give me grace and strength to get through it. But can't that be the same in relationships? And why can't we be transparent to each other? Why can't we? See, I need somebody to get in the ditches with me sometimes. See, I need somebody to get down dirty with me sometimes and say, brother, I got you. You can make it. You're going to make it. You're more than a conqueror. God is able to pull you through any situation that you're in. That's what we need more of. But we sit and talk about people as if we were never sinners who came into the house of God. As if we were never liars. We were never cheaters. We were never a thief. But we get so... Mm, we get, mm, we get so high and mighty that we forget about our sins. Some of the ones that we're still doing, amen? Keep smiling and looking forth, amen? But we forget about that. We're so quick to judge each other. Y'all, we need to love more. We need to love more. We need to pray for each other more. If you don't see me, pray for me. But don't send me some religious text message that don't mean nothing because you ain't thinking about me. You just trying to be nosy where I'm at. Yeah. Come on now, if we tell them the truth. It's, <laughs> it's time to get real. Because God wants us to know those who labor amongst you, is what the word said. So if you know where my struggles are, because I'm telling you, then you know what to pray for. Amen? If you know that I'm struggling because I just got saved, but I'm still struggling with drinking. I'm still struggling with drugs. I'm still struggling with this. Because I'm transparent. Don't talk about me. You was there one time. Real talk. Some of you might take a sip a little bit later on when we get done here, amen? But praise be to God. So, loneliness is a real thing. If we say it isn't, it's a real thing. The disciples were lonely, I'm sure at some point. Can you imagine when Jesus left them? Now they've been walking with Jesus all this time, and he's telling them, preparing them, hey, I, I'm leaving, I gotta go, guys, I gotta go. Can you imagine when Jesus died, they're like, Oh, wow, he, he really did leave us. Now, I'm sure they all remember that he said he was going to rise on the third day, but the initial shock, the father left me. What do we do now? Oh, he's always been with us. I've always had, can go to him for questions. He's always taught me to do the right thing, but now I'm on my own. So what a lonely thing. Even here, the scripture says in... Matthew 27, 46, it says, Jesus cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was temporary because he understood that God couldn't witness the sin. So there was just a, a moment of weakness there, but he understood what, even in the Garden of Consent, could you not pray with me one hour? He's been disappointed before. 
So we all go through disappointments. We all go through rejections. Jesus was rejected, even in his own town, with the word of God says that a prophet is not without honor in his own city. We're all going to go through it. But the key going through it is going through it with each other. Learning, the Bible, I think the Bible's talking about learning how to uh, bear our brother's burdens. Learning how to get along with each other. Learning how to be honest with each other. Learning how to not judge one another. But learning how to pray for each other earnestly. There's nothing like when you come to the house of God for prayer and you get some praying people in the house of God. Thank God for the mothers in this house that pray. Amen? Amen. We've just got to be careful, y'all. Because we can so turn away people and not even know it by our judgmental attitude. There's pastors out there. I was going to, years ago, I met this pastor. <clears throat> what church you go to? <laughs> I go to such and such a church. Too many folks there. Come on over here. And I thought, I'm good, brother. I'm happy where I'm at. God bless you, though. So, again, I didn't want to be long tonight. I just wanted to get this off my chest. I just felt like it was just something that needed to be said. Now, it's funny because when we talk about, and I thought about this as I was writing some notes, this came to my mind as far as sometimes feeling rejected or even sometimes feeling alone from God. And that's real talk. Sometimes we pray. Sometimes we pray and we don't feel God. Sometimes he just doesn't feel like he's there. I mean, of course, he's always there. We know that he's omnipresent. But there's sometimes that when we go through our walk in life, I think God just sits there. And I think it's, it's by faith that we walk. God, I may not feel you right now, but I know you're working on my behalf. I know you're working it out because your word tells me that you sit on the right hand of the Father and you make intercession for me all the time, day and night. So I know you're there, God, but sometimes I don't feel you. I remember one time my mother was in pain so much. This was not too long ago. And her body was just wrecked with pain. And I remember she cried. I remember just watching my mother cry in bed. That night. And my mother's a strong woman. And I was just thinking this just today, how my mother, her, her relationship with God, her prayer was so strong with God. How God answered so many, and is still today answering her prayer. But I remember her crying out, God, have you forsaken me? And I thought to myself, what a lonely place that she must have felt. Again, there's nothing wrong with that. Because sometimes we can talk to God and be honest. God, why is this happening? God, what am I going through with this situation? And God is, he always brings an answer. It may not come when we want it, but I promise you, God is a God who always answers because that's who he is. He says, I'm a man. I'm not like man. I can't lie. He cannot lie. His words are yes and amen. His promises are. So and I remember saying to you, like, she must have felt the lonely point where she thought God had turned her back. And how many of us have felt that? How many of us have been in pain? And how many of us have gone through deaths and our friends leaving and, 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 and loved ones leaving? And we're lonely. Like, God, why? Why me? Why did I have to go through this pain, Lord? Why? We got to be real, y'all. That's the point that I'm making. We have to be real. I need to know that my brothers and sisters have my back. I need to know, and I pray, I pray for Bishop all the time because I'm like, Lord, and I, that's the honest truth, Bishop. Lord, I'm a mess. I know I should be doing a lot more in here, and I don't. God, forgive me for not doing the things that Bishop need me to do. I pray all the time. Lord, give him strength, because I can't imagine if it's just me. There's a thousand other people in here. And what this man, the weight on him must be like. So, Bishop, I repent tonight. I do. I repent to you 
There are some places that I should be, should have been, and I didn't because of my laziness. So I repent tonight and I ask you to forgive me. And I will say this night, the next, mm, the next time you need me for something, I'm going to be there. You got my word on that one. Enough is enough. I've got a lot to do in a short time to get there. I got to be about my father's business. Yes. Pastor Stephen was preaching that thing this morning. I just thought, God, if I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. Yes. If I leave this earth, Lord, let me be working for you, God. I'm tired, y'all. I got to be about my father's business. Got to be about my father's business. Amen. So again, I just want to say tonight, before we judge our brothers, think about where God brought you from, brought you out of, and still delivering you from. Think about that the next time you want to judge somebody. Think the next time somebody come here for prayer and, 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 and you hear their business down at the altar and you thinking, oh God, here they go again. Think about the 99 times that God brought you out. I remember, come, mm, let me keep, God is just an awesome God. He really is. Because God is always going to give you what you need. He's always going to take care of his children. I remember when my struggles, when God was bringing me back to my vaccinated condition, and I would go out to the bars on Sunday night, and I knew I had no place being in the bar, but because I was still a sinner in my flesh, and I would come into the house of God, and I remember just thinking, like, Lord, I thank you. Because, see, I could have been lost out there. The enemy could have captured me. But God got me. God's got you. God's got all of us. Press toward that mark, y'all. It's time to press. Yes, it is. The man of God was in here doing the thing. He said, it's time. We have to press even more. Because trust me, the enemy, the devil, walketh about like a roaring lion, seeking whom they devour. But he has no authority. We have authority and power. And we've got to use that. God has given us power. And I was thinking about that. I said, Lord, even the disciples, we're just, there's no respect of a person. God has given us the same abilities, the same gift, the same power. The Holy Ghost is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen? So, in closing, love your neighbors. Love your pastor. Pray for your pastor. Pray for the saints of God. When you see them and when you don't see them, pray for the saints of God. And pray and ask God to help you build healthy relationships in the church. Because our relationships aren't good relationships in here. Again, some people just like to get close to you so they can go back, learn your business, and tell everybody. Amen. So pray for the spirit of discernment. God, I'm lonely, but I want friends. I want a friend. God, you send me. I don't want to choose because every time I choose, I make the wrong mistakes. That's what we do. This is what our flesh does. You say go right, you go left, you go straight. That's what we do. But pray tonight, God, send me the right friends. Send me the right fellowship in our church. Let's be about our father's business. Because we're out here trying to save the world, but we got bleeding soldiers right here in the house of God. Bleeding out. These things are to not be. Amen? So, Father, I thank you tonight, Lord. I thank you, Father, Lord, that... I thank you that you love us, God. You love us where we are. And that's the beauty of you, Father, Lord. You love us where we are to get us where you want us to go, Lord. So, Father, tonight I just ask you, Lord, to touch every heart tonight, Father, Lord. Father, Lord, those who are struggling, Lord, struggling because they've come in and they've made bad relations, they've made bad choices, they've done bad things. You want all of our hearts, Father, Lord, not just part of it, oh God, Lord. Help us to give it all, Father, Lord. Help us to trust again, Lord, with all of our heart, Father, oh God, Lord. Sometimes it is hard, Lord, that when we've been messed over, we've been used, and we've been talked about, it's hard to trust people. It is, Father, Lord. Yeah. But Lord, you know what? But I trust you. I give you all, God. 
So God, tonight, Lord, mend those broken hearts, mend those broken places, God, that's in our hearts. Those who have come into the house of God who've been wounded in the house, Lord. Those who are broken in the house of God tonight, Lord. Father, mend the hearts tonight, God. You are a heart fixer, God. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord, tonight, Lord. Jehovah God, Lord. You are awesome, Father, Lord. So we thank you tonight. We thank you, Lord, and we praise you, Lord. We just give you glory, Lord. Hey, this is Pastor Stephen Worley. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. If you'd like to donate to this ministry, go to shilohub.org. Remember to hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you next time.